I guess, you know. We started with riding horses. We, we rode horses forever. And, and we, we joined the wagon train and followed them around for a while, kind of flagging traffic and stuff. And they all drove mules, pretty much, and, and we rode our horses. And then we met the guy that actually rode a lot of mules. And uh, we got a big mare, a big Missouri fox trot mare, and decided to breed her. Well, we did. And this had been 20, my mule is 23 years old this year. So it was 23 years ago. We bred that mare, or 24, and then she gave us my mule. Then we took her back. The next year. The next year, bred her again. He got his mule. And then, of course, we had to wait three years <laughs> and we started riding. And from that day on, we was hooked on mules, riding mules. The guy that was riding with us, you know, and, and uh, he had one he was riding and the other one he was leading. I says, why do you ride a mule? He said, if you ever rode a mule, you wouldn't ride no damn horse. <laughs> and that's about the truth. Yeah. And then from there on, we thought that was pretty cool. We might ought to get us another mare. Well, we got us two or three mares, and we had a friend that had a jack, and we'd take him down and get him bread. <clears throat> well, then Bill decided he's going to sell his jack, and we thought, what are we going to do if we want to breed our mares? We bought him. <laughs> 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 and then from there, I mean, old Rocky was with us a long time, lots of good babies, so we bred mares. When we accumulated mares, we... Just, I mean, people would want to know if we wanted to, their mares, they would, didn't need them anymore, couldn't <clears> feed them, or different reasons. And we started out, we had five or six, and then it got to the point I can't say no. And right now we got 24 mares. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a passion for it, I think. Yeah. It's just something we enjoy. And people, I mean, people buy mules, a variety of people buy mules. Women, young people, old people, and they like them to ride. That's what, that's what they do most, is ride, we, we raise riding mules. We've had a few guys that wanted them <clears throat> a mule out of a quarter horse so they could work the farm with them, you know, work cattle and stuff. Uh -huh. And then we've had others that wanted gated mules where they go out on the trail, you know, and just go down the road. And that's another thing, is the variety. A mule can do anything a horse can do. They have actual mule rodeos. They, they can cut cattle, they can team pin. If it ain't half ass, it's just a horse. <laughs> it's, it's actually the cross between the yeah, donkey and the it's, horse. It's, it's a, yeah, you start out with a mare horse and it, Breed it to a donkey. <clears throat> and uh, we use a mammoth donkey, which gets large colts. <clears throat> Some of them will grow up, they'll be 16 hand high. Mm -hmm. you know. And a mule is a hybrid. They can't reproduce. A mule can see all four feet at the same time. A horse can't do that with the way their eyes are set. Uh, they got a harder foot. Of course, they get that from the donkey background. Um, their shoulders. A horse goes back and forth, a mule pistons. When, when they hit the ground, one of us or both of us are in the stall with that baby. We like to handle their feet and their faces and their ears, and, you know, to kind of get them used to all that. I can go down and stick finger in their mouth and they don't really care. I think it's just the handling of them, mostly. I mean, people want to know when they pick them up, what will they know? Well, our colts will be leading, loading, standing tied. We work with their feet regular. We lead them around. There's, there's a little saying over there on the refrigerator, the reason why we do what we do. The reason we do what we do, I'll read this to you. A trainer can go worldwide looking for horses to compete the show ring. A breeder must create a show ring at home. They must decide on each breeding, be there for each birth, worry about each cough, enjoy each great moment, 
endure each disappointment, and celebrate each victory. Breeders cannot just go get another one. They have to make another one. Wait a year to see what will happen. Try to do this again year after year after year. Learn patience, learn bloodlines, learn crosses, learn to stick with our gut and vision, and learn to persevere. But we also know that if in life there's no greater reward than walking into the stable and knowing that each stall contains a unique example of your work and hopes and dreams. And to make it all perfect, they love you back and nicker when they hear your voice. This is the life of a breeder.